What's going on everyone, Dots Gaming here, and today I'm bringing you guys my top 10 new player tips for new players in World of Warcraft in 2021. This is just going to be a video with some quick fire tips to help you guys get started as new players in WoW. If you're looking for something more long form that has a lot more explanation, you can feel free to check out my World of Warcraft Complete Beginner Guide. And even though it was made at the end of BFA, I did make a lot of calls to Shadowlands and most of the information there is still 100% relevant, so you can check that out in the description below. But kicking off this video and getting into the actual tips, my first tip is to pick a high population or full realm whose data center is close to where you live. Obviously, if the data center is close to where you live, that's going to give you the most optimal ping. So if you simply just Google like WoW server locations, you'll be able to find articles that have the data centers and realms listed. So you can pick one that's as close to you as possible. Now, the reason I recommend picking a high or full populated realm is because you're simply going to have more players to interact with if you do so. If you pick a like low or medium pop realm, you might have trouble finding things in the auction house, finding players to play with, etc. So going to a more active realm is just going to be a lot easier for you to find people. So that is the first thing that I absolutely recommend. My second tip is that you should not worry about your race unless you plan on competitively PvPing. Racials don't really matter all that much in PvE. The difference in optimal DPS between like, let's say the number one race or the last race is so infinitesimally small that it does not really matter outside of the race to worlds first. If you are the 99.99% of people, it, it really doesn't matter what race you pick. Just pick whatever you think looks the coolest or it maybe has a racial skill that you like or is on a faction that you like. Now. If you're PvPing, though, it's going to be a different story. A lot of the racials inside of World of Warcraft, the, you have active abilities for your racials, um, as well as some minor passives, but the actives do do and can play a large role in PvP since most of them are very utility focused. So a lot of that utility can come in handy in a PvP environment. And if you do want to see a tier list on which races are best for PvP, I do have a video that covers that and we'll link it in the description below. My third tip is to also pick a class based on what you think you'd enjoy, not what's meta. If you've never played an MMORPG before, let me tell you, the balance swings can come and go. One patch or class will be meta, the next class or the next patch, it will be trash tier. So I don't necessarily think that as a new player, it's best to just pick whatever's quote unquote easy or the quote unquote best. You know, I would recommend just, you know, you're a new player. Just pick a class that you think is going to be fun, that you think you're going to enjoy. And I think you will have the best game experience if you do that. Just because, again, the balance changes can really come and go. And you don't want to pick a class that's really strong, but you're not that into. But And then the next patch that comes out, the class gets nerfed. And now you're stuck on a class that's not only not good, but you don't really like it. So I'd recommend just picking what you like. My fourth tip is going to be that... For leveling as a new player, the best way is to just simply quest. I get asked a lot by a lot of people, like, what's the best way to level in WoW? And it, it's really to just quest. The order I'd recommend doing it is to start with Exile's Reach. That is the new tutorial island that comes with World of Warcraft Shadowlands. And it's very, very well made. And I do highly recommend doing it. It's a really good introduction to WoW. And it's a, it's a lot more fun than, in my opinion, than some of the other, like, base starting zones so i would definitely recommend that uh, once you complete that if you're a brand new player what you're going to do is you're going to move into the battle for azeroth story automatically now what that's going to do is that was the previous expansion and so that story by going through that you'll basically understand how we got to where we are in shadowlands and so once you do the bfa from 10 to 48 50 ish you will then be able to move into shadowlands and you will get that quest automatically and you can start moving into the end game content now if you're a returning player and you've already completed bfa if you want to let's say maybe start a new character after exiles reach you can go talk to chromie who can be found in either orgrimmar or stormwind and when you talk to chromie you could basically level through any previous expansion that you want it that you want maybe instead of bfa and you can do that from 10 to 4850 and then you will be able to go into shadowland so i just wanted to shout out chromie time just because if you're a returning player that might be relevant to you my fifth tip is to keybind your skills and do not keyboard a turn. It's going to be tempting as a new player to just want to maybe put the skills on your bar and click them with your mouse, but do not do that. It's a very bad habit to develop 
All of your skills should be key bound to something on your keyboard to a key button click. So you do not want to be clicking your skills. The other thing too is that at a base, WASD is going to be bound to walk forward, turn left, turn right, and step backwards. But honestly, you're going to want to rebind A and D from turn left and turn right to strafe left and straight right and hold right click to actually turn your character. Keyboard turning is, is super slow. It's super inefficient. Mouse turning is infinitely better. And if you start these habits from the beginning of your World of Warcraft journey, it's going to allow you to develop these good habits over time because if you play clicking your skills and keyboard turning for your entire leveling process and maybe the beginning of you doing stuff in endgame, when you actually start to, you know, if you are so interested to try and improve and get better, you're going to have to do these things eventually, except for at that point, you're just gonna have to break a lot of bad habits. So I just recommend doing this stuff from the beginning. Again, I have a guide to this on my YouTube channel. I will link it once again in the description below so that you can check it out if you would like to learn more about how to really do this. My sixth tip, we're going to start to get into some Shadowlands systems, and once you get into Shadowlands, all of this stuff will be introduced to you, um, you know, through the questing process. So you're going to want to do Torghast, Mythic Plus, and or PvP, Anima, and Soul Collection Weekly. So you might not know what any of those words meant, but let me explain it real quick. So... The first thing is that by doing Torghast, you earn a currency called Soul Ash. Now, Soul Ash is used to basically create your legendary item, and at the time of recording this video, each endgame character can wear one legendary item. So by getting the Soul Ash of Torghast, a base piece and its supplementary pieces from the auction house, you're able to go to Torghast and create a legendary item for yourself. You also need the recipe for that legendary. You can look more up uh, on Torghast if you want to, but you want to do Torghast weekly. On top of that, there is something that you can uh, interact with to get one item every week, and it is called the Vault, and it can be located in Ouroboros. Now, in order to actually w uh, get an item weekly from the Vault, you need to do either Mythic Plus level dungeons or raided PvP, or of raiding, of course, too. But for most newer players, I feel like it'll most likely be Mythic Plus or maybe some raided PvP. Now... Basically, you need to complete a certain number of Mythic Plus dungeons or earn a certain amount of uh, PvP currency, or in the case of raids, kill a certain number of raid bosses every single week. And when you do that, you'll open up a vault slot. Now, these vault slots basically at the end of a uh, week, they'll resets on Tuesday, will roll to a random item, and you can basically choose between a bunch of random items for your character so you will be able to take one of those choices so maybe let's say you really need a pair of boots and thankfully you get boots from your vault you can bam click those and you get a free pair of boots for doing a bunch of activities the previous week so you want to be sure to do stuff each week again if you just simply go to the vault inside of Ouroboros and interact with it you can see all the different requirements for these vault slots now in terms of anima and soul collection these are things that you have to do through your shadowlands covenant these are weekly quests that you need to do collect 1000 anima which is a currency for the covenant sanctum and soul collections where you simply have to go into this end game zone called the maw and just right click a bunch of souls and you basically collect them and then bring them back to your sanctum but in terms of weekly activities these four things are pretty much all you need to do you got torghast your vault stuff anima and soul collection otherwise you pretty much do whatever you want there's not like a lot of crazy daily grinds that you have to do like you used to in the past um maybe if you're catching up yes but like when you actually are you know interacting with the end game on a regular basis there's not a lot you need to do daily and mostly is weekly but speaking of stuff you might need to do daily my seventh tip is going to be in order to earn catch-up renown you're going to want to do end game activities and callings now callings are daily activities that you get from your covenant sanctum now these things can give renown if they don't give renown you don't have to do them unless you want to but if they do give renown you're gonna want to do those callings which usually will just involve doing a bunch of world quests out in shadowlands but obviously, if they give renown, it's very good to do. You could also get renown from endgame activities such as PvP, uh, dungeons, raids, etc. So by doing, you know, some early, like lower tiered endgames content when you first hit level 60, you'll be able to start to catch up your renown relatively quickly. Like I said, just basic heroic or mythic dungeons or even just doing random battlegrounds can all give renown. And for those of you who might not know what renown is, 
Basically, renown is just like a reputation that you have with your covenant sanctum, but as you rank up that reputation, you get a bunch of bonuses, such as uh, increased stamina, so you get more health, you get bonuses for your sanctum, you get followers for your command board, which is this expansion's like command table to send followers out on missions and stuff. Uh, you can also get increased PvP eye level gear. You get more uh, ranks in your soul bind, and soul binds are basically just mini talent trees you get through the covenant system. I know if you're brand new, like never played WoW, some of this might sound really confusing, but like all these uh, Shadowland systems that I do mention are very much introduced very well. They're introduced very well as you progress through the game. So do not worry. The game will naturally teach you what these things are. My eighth tip is going to be that you can upgrade your Covenant gear to eye level 197. This is something that a lot of people do not know. And your Covenant gear can be upgraded relatively high in terms of eye level for very, very cheap. You get your Covenant gear through doing your Covenant campaign, and you get more ranks of your Covenant campaign through, do, through leveling up your Renown, which is why tip number seven is super important. But as you get that Covenant gear, each time you obtain a new piece through the campaign, the eye level of your covenant pieces can increase. And if you go to a item improver person, guy, man, bro, dude, inside your sanctum, you could actually rank up your pieces with anima. And it's a very cheap amount of anima. So as you're already collecting the anima anyway from tip number six, because you're doing that stuff weekly, as you rank up your covenant renown and you get more of that covenant sanctum gear, you can go to this guy and turn that renown directly into gear upgrades. And you can get almost a full set of gear from just your covenant sanctum gear which will allow you to catch up your item level with relative uh speed when you first hit end game and then that's going to segue myself into tip number nine which is that if you do have any like empty gear slots such as like your necklace your rings and your trinkets you're not going to obviously be getting from your covenant campaign so instead you're going to want to get those through honor now, honor is a currency that you earn from doing unranked PvP, such as raided, raided battlegrounds or arena skirmishes. So I'd highly recommend that to fill out the rest of your gear, you get the gear from your uh, from honor, which is going to be, like I said, that unrated PvP. You can simply go talk to the vendor inside of Ouroboros once you have enough honor, and you can buy that gear at a, the base eye level, and then you talk to the guy standing next to him, and you could rank that eye leveled gear all the way up to, again, 1 and 97. So between just your covenant gear and some basic honor gear, you will be eye level 197 and ready to start moving into some higher level mythic plus, as well as start doing some uh, raided battlegrounds to start to get your conquest gear, which could also give you some additional PvP gear. Um, conquest gear and mythic plus and then raid gear are going to be the three ways that you gear after doing this basic gearing process that i just mentioned now my 10th and final tip is going to be to enchant your gear a lot of new players don't know that you can actually enchant your gear uh, you're able to enchant a couple different pieces of gear you have your chest your cloak your rings your boots your weapon, your gloves, and your bracers. You can enchant all of these things with some small power increases, and I definitely recommend doing that. If you look up just a basic guide for whatever class and spec you're playing, it'll tell you specifically which enchants you're going to want. Um, so I do recommend checking those out. But I can give you guys a basic, a basic enchant spec to follow that will be pretty good for like every class and spec. Granted, it might be a little more optimal to go with some other stuff for certain roles, but this will be a good guide to follow. For your chest, you're going to want to get stats. For your cloak, you're going to want to get stamina. For your rings, you can get any secondary stat of your choice. For boots, you're going to want to get agility. For your weapon, you're going to want to get celestial guidance. For your gloves, you're going to want to get strength, and for your bracers, you're going to want to get intellect. Now, again, some of those stats won't be as used by uh, certain classes, but that's just a general overview. Again, obviously, if you're a mage and you only use intellect, you're not going to need the strength and agility enchant, so you could basically uh, skip those two. But this is just a general guideline of enchants to follow. You know, it's better to have something on your gear than nothing. But again, if you'd like to get into some little more optimized enchants, I do recommend looking up your specific class spec guides. But guys, that is going to be it for me today. My top 10 tips for new players in World of Warcraft. Again, 
Hopefully this wasn't too confusing that you guys did understand uh, these tips. Uh, if you haven't really played WoW yet, and if you haven't gotten into some of these end game systems, a lot, a, a couple of the tips that I had specifically for Shadowlands might have been a little confusing. But do not worry, you, these systems will be introduced naturally to you through your leveling process. And again, then these tips will make a lot more sense. But guys, that is going to be it for me today. Hopefully you did find this video helpful. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you smacked a like on it. If you have any questions or comments about this, feel free to leave them below. And guys, for more great MMORPG and World of Warcraft content, please hit that sub button as well as hit the bell to keep those notifications on. Thank you all for stopping by today. I do very much appreciate it. As always, I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see you all in the next video.